Okay, so how's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I just want to quickly summarize up to this point what I've done because this is the last part before paint. And I don't want to labor you too long with this because these kind of things have been done so many times. But I want to uh, just describe what I've done in this process. There may be some things that might be helpful to some of you. Okay, so the chassis is pretty much ready to be uh, soldered up to the Lock Sound version 5. Uh, soundboard and then uh, as, as most of you may or may not know I built up this speaker enclosure uh, custom I wanted the whole reasoning for this was I I gained 50% capacity here uh, in the sound chamber over the the stock one that it comes with and uh, it sits up inside of the long hood like this right and in order to accommodate that extra space that I needed uh, I had to remove this plug. I mean this plug used to be up inside there. It sort of stabilizes this whole photo etch screen here. So I popped that out. It takes up quite a bit of room. You can see the thickness of it there. Uh, then I basically had to mask tape this with Tamiya, this screen, like bend it a bit, like get it so that it sat nice and then just covered it in a, in a, in a blanket of tape. Got it flush as I could and then I just basically, you know, with a dental pick, just CA'd the seams on the inside, peeled the tape away and cleaned it up a bit and it came out pretty good. And then I added this horn by CalScale, which is a nice little horn. Really nice crisp moldings, by the way. Good for you, CalScale. And um, then I scratched up the SRY typical sunshade and then there was this sort of firecracker antenna plate here. Yeah, nothing much. Oh, and then the sand filler hatches, I had to scratch those up because there was a sort of a blister here. It was a different style altogether. I had to peel those off. I did a bit of damage, but then I cleaned it up and filled it. And then I think I, yeah, I packed out the back here with just a white styrene plate for the uh, brake lever. And I also reinserted, um, I think this came with lit number boards here. So, but I want I put the plugs back in and I'm putting uh, LEDs in here. So I had to cut that away because they're just uh, clear sort of dowel plugs with a backlight on them front and back. So I'm just going to run uh, the uh, LEDs direct with little bezels on them. Okay. And then uh, with the chassis here frame, uh, this is the cab platform at didn't really have to do much to it. Uh, just had to add these two new sand filler hatches because I lost one and there was sort of a box on here and a riser here which are not on the prototype so I cleaned those off. Used a piece of uh, evergreen dowel there and then I glued a square piece of strip on top and then just rounded it with a file after they were glued and mounted on. In the same kind of philosophy with how I do the ditch lights, right? Like I glue them on a long piece of channel first so I can work them over and then I cut them to size. Let me just zoom in for you a bit here. Uh, I cut them to size at the end and then mount them on these little uh, same plates I made the sand filler hatch material with. And these are just really solid. Here's the anvil that's almost built up, glued onto the front of the pilot. You can see this is just a piece of 80 thou scrap glued on and shaped up. You can glue a rectangular piece on if you want and then file it to shape if you feel comfortable with that or just pre-cut it so you got to make two so anyway this is just uh, evergreen scale models number 108 strip I just eyeball an angle just just cut a piece of strip like this an angle just any angle and then just try it like do a dry run see how it matches up and then once you get the angle that you're happy with just make a template so you can trace cut a bunch more and then when that first one's in place, you just dry run it in like that, mark it at the corner of the anvil and then at the top of where the coupler pocket is, 
and then just cut that and then drop it in place put a bead of glue on the very corner here you're good to go you can touch it up later with a little nail file she's ready for paint okay so here's the finished anvil and as I showed you just previous to this how it, you just dry run a piece in like that mark it with a pencil cut it cut it a bit proud a little bit if anything so you can sand it back a bit if it's if it's too small you'll have to cut another one but just drop it in tack it on a corner somewhere and just flood it with cement and then just while it's still wet you can kind of tweak it and move it around once you do a few it's really not difficult at all and there you have it you have an anvil just like the picture in the prototype